When we talk about the American dream coming to life, Oprah Winfrey is the first person that comes to mind. From being a life coach to millions out there to working on magazine publications, book recommendations, interviews, and whatnot, the woman has done it all. But that's not to say that she hasn't experienced her fair share of controversies with some of her guests. So here are Oprah's most controversial guests over the years starting off with Elizabeth Taylor. Now, this interview wasn't a scandalous one because of the drama revolving around Taylor. Instead, it was because of how the star reacted. So, like all other interviews, Oprah knew what her audience was looking for was some sort of tea and deets that no one's ever heard before. And playing into that, she had some questions for the guest, which caused a whole lot of chaos. So, the beginning of the interview went fine. Everything was okay. But Winfrey kind of dug a hole for herself when she asked her guest about the star's romantic life. When she asked Taylor how her current relationships and romantic life is going, the guest bluntly replied, none of your business. And apparently, it struck a chord with her, because for the rest of the interview, we sensed a lot of rudeness and hostility from the guest end. To top it all off, by the end, Oprah even ended it by jokingly saying that her guest wasn't coming clean about the whole thing, and it looks like Taylor had enough by that time. Well, we definitely know because she literally called it the worst interview of her life. Next up, Tom Cruise. Now, this one wasn't a bad controversy, but it was definitely one that had a lot of people talking when the show aired. So if you've been living under a rock these past couple of days, let us run it past you again. Oprah called on our favorite Mission Impossible possible star and had a lot to talk about what was going on in their life. So, a lot of us have seen Cruz in a lot of interviews and talk shows, and one thing is for sure, the man knows how to conduct himself, but we saw a completely different side of him when he came on the show. While talking, he agreed to having a huge crush on Katie Holmes, who was his girlfriend at the time. Now, it wasn't really what he said, but how he said it. He gets out of his chair and wildly flails his arms. He is in the air, pumping his fists, dropping to his knees, slamming against the floor, and performing a ton of other other wild things. Although Oprah seemed to be smiling throughout, she was clearly shaken by the experience, which was evidently not lost on the audience. Moving on, Rihanna. This was a much more somber interview due to the nature of issues she was a part of back in the day when she was on Oprah's Next Chapter in 2012. We all pretty much know everything about Rihanna's abusive relationship, but in 2012, it was all news and there was a lot of chaos surrounding the subject. After showing Oprah around her bar Barbados neighborhood where she grew up, Rihanna spoke up about the abuse she suffered at the hands of her ex-boyfriend, R&B singer Chris Brown, in a long interview. When asked about the media frenzy that followed, a distraught Rihanna stated, It was a strange position to be in, because as furious as I was, as angry and wounded and betrayed, I just felt like he made that mistake because he needed assistance, and who's going to help him? She also added that she was more confused in the entire scenario because, according to her, no one would suggest he needed assistance, but everyone would call him a monster. Amazing how even during such a turbulent time, all she was thinking about was the help he needed instead of the attention she should have gotten. This was truly a controversial moment in Oprah's history, because the topic was a very hush-hush one, and having all that out in public by the queen herself was a big deal. We're glad, though, that she found Oprah's space to be a safe platform to come out and talk about all that had happened. We love that Queen Riri is in her thriving era again. Also, Michael Jackson. Oprah's conversation with Michael Jackson on February 10, 1993 was the most viewed show in TV history. Michael, a notoriously reclusive celebrity, had steadfastly refused to do an interview for 14 years. Nearly 90 million people from all around the globe watched the historic live event that took place before any sexual assault charges were revealed. According to Winfrey, it was the most thrilling interview she had ever done. The complicated dynamics of Michael and Joe Jackson, his father, have been widely discussed in the media, and it was in that interview that a lot of things were cleared up. From the moonwalker's abusive relationship with his father to details about his skin color, surgeries, and whatnot, they discussed it all. When talking about his dad, Michael wasn't sure why Joe hit him, so he couldn't provide a good answer to Oprah when she asked. The singer added that he couldn't say whether his dad treated him like a prized possession or if he just happened to be like that. According to him, he was a stickler for the rules, and some may even call him a disciplinarian. He was a hard man. A mere stare from the man was terrifying 
terrifying, as Michael put it. Michael Jackson even revealed how there were a few occasions when his father came to see him, and he ended up in the hospital, about to retch. He also explained to her that he suffered from a skin ailment that caused his skin to lose its color. Michael told Oprah he used cosmetics to cover up blotchiness, but he'd never bleached his skin on purpose since the vitiligo-like condition ran in his family. Next up, Terry McMillan. Terry McMillan's book, How Stella Got Her Groove Back, was adapted into a popular film. The author, like her protagonist, had a crush on a much younger guy. Terry, then 43 years old, went to Jamaica in 1995 and met Jonathan Plummer, then 20. When he revealed his sexual orientation to her in 2005, she left him. Public controversy and dispute broke out, and the writer used Oprah as a stage to face her ex. Now, this was a very controversial episode because the couple was airing their dirty laundry after a very public breakup and people were all for it. She even filed a $40 million lawsuit against Plummer, which she ultimately won. But then, in 2010, Oprah managed to get things mended. So what came out of it? As McMillan explained to Winfrey, all guys aren't manly, so she had no reason to assume Plummer was hiding a secret life. He didn't have a feminine side to him at all. In the episode, she argued with her ex that he had never mentioned his sexual orientation. In fact, he avoided the crucial point entirely. When Winfrey pressed them for an explanation of his lawsuit, the actor evaded her question by claiming he had no desire to re-stir things right now. While they disputed each other's story throughout most of the episode, they claimed to be making progress toward reconciliation. For his part, Plummer said, I regret hurting her. He also revealed that he is now lonely. Given that you can't fake this thing, McMillan concluded that maybe Jonathan did love her, and things kinda ended on a better note. Lately, Oprah admitted how awkward she felt during during McMillan and ex-husband Jonathan Plummer's 2005 visit on her show. And then, Mackenzie Phillips. No one knew what would be disclosed before this famous person appeared on Oprah's program. Phillips made an appearance in order to promote her book. The biography discussed Phillips' well-publicized struggles with substance abuse and many arrests via people. Phillips also shared a surprising revelation about her sexual history with her father, Mama's, and the Papa's member, John Phillips, for the first time in her biography. She was in high spirits when she walked through the door, and she said that her father, John Phillips, drugged her to protect her from the parents and fathers who had sexually molested her. She then said that the abuse lasted for another decade, during which time she became addicted to illegal substances. So while she was in her most vulnerable state, when Winfrey asked her to read aloud from page 108 of her book, which discussed her incestuous connection with her father. Less than a minute into the discussion, geez, Phillips presumably knew that questions would be raised regarding the charges made against her father, but it certainly wasn't the smartest or most sensitive option to bring it up so early in the interview. And with all that, all Phillips could muster was a wow, as she looked genuinely shocked and concerned. She also added that this wasn't how she expected things to go, but that's okay, okay. But her demeanor and words suggested it wasn't okay, clearly. Later, Mackenzie even added that before reading publicly from her book, she felt vulnerable and afraid. That's a wrap for this video. What did you think about these controversial interviews? Could Oprah have handled the last one a little better? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.